Hey everybody, Ashley here with Scrap W Crafts, and um, today we are doing our Christmas flip mini album. Um, there are, there is a kit in store and a um, a kitten pattern in store, and then just a pattern in store as well um, for those that want like just the pattern. Um, and you can find that at scrapdavidu.com for those things. Um, today we're going to go ahead and make the album. Um, your kit is going to include the tutorial and then two links. I believe it's going to be two. It might be three. Um, two to three links to exclusive videos. Um, it is basically start to finish with the album. So. Um, your kit will come with links to those videos. Uh, oh, we're censored. Oh, geez. Hold on, guys. Oh, thank you, Carol. I wonder why we're censored. And... Where is Jannie? I'm gonna kick Jenny up to the moderator. I don't know why she wasn't up there. <laughs> I think that Link should be allowed now. Oh, there we go. Okay, yay. Okay. So before we get into all of this, I do want to show you that the album that we made for the Christmas album, you can do it for any album. Um, I have the deluxe collector's edition of the graphic 45 times nouveau which um, is the daily deal for today in the store um, so these are the um, these are the earlier collections of graphic 45 that they have re-released so that's awesome because I actually wasn't crafting when these ones were released so it's kind of it's new to me um, so I have made a mini flip with this one and you can see that these are on foam and there's dimensions and layers. I kept the front nice and simple as well as the inside. Um, it, it's sitting in the same kind of layout as the Christmas flip. Um, oops, is that stuck? Oh, there we go. Okay. I did do it a little bit different as far as with these brackets that you can tuck behind and such like this one and tuck behind this and this is the same bracket die that we used in the other one it's just kind of on the reverse it's the it's the piece that you actually throw away but in this one I keep it so essentially you can get a couple different versions off of that bracket die besides the two that are on there okay and you can write your little sentiment or journal right here and it just pushes back in. Now this particular album right here is going to, um, this one is going to be a giveaway album. Um, for those that have purchased a kit or a kit or have purchased a kitten tutorial or just the tutorial, you guys' names are going to go into a drawing. Um, this drawing is going to be open until next Tuesday at noon Pacific Standard Time, my time and I will close the drawing and then we'll draw next Tuesday here on this channel for this album for part two of this class so um, so this one will be a cute little giveaway album I love how this turned out the little clocks and stuff the little times nouveau so We'll set this one aside. So this one is in store. If you haven't got this pack, I don't know that they would re-release this again. So this might be kind of like a limited edition thing. Um, and it is on the crafty or the daily deal. So let's go ahead and talk about your actual kit. So you're going to be able to make this album here. And it fits in this uh, priority box. And um, I made a card with the scraps and then, of course, a little 
label because we're going to wrap it in tissue and then this will be the label that seals the tissue shut and then the card will go in on top of it and it's just a nice really nice presentation fill it full of your family photos of the year and send it to um, distant relatives grandparents it's great for grandparents so um, <clears throat> we're going to be making this entire album here the kit what you're going to get with the kit is the tutorial and ignore this my printer had some issues well actually no it's just out of ink so what you're going to get is the tutorial and you're going to get one of the my mind's eye sleigh bells ring 12 by 12 collection packs there's nine um, double-sided sheets and then the coordinating sticker sheet in here okay and the enamel shapes, my mind's eye enamel shapes. I've used some of them. You're going to get one green eight and a half. All the paper in this is eight and a half by eleven. You'll get one green eight and a half by eleven. One red. You're going to get um, four craft. And those are going to be for used for matting and tags and things like that. You're going to be getting four of the white, again, used for matting and tags. And then um, in the actual construction of the book, there is one smaller piece used of the white. You're going to get nine, is it nine? It is. It's nine of the black cardstock. And then one of the... Um, 12 by 12 um, natural or black chipboard. I believe they're sending natural and either way it doesn't matter. It gets completely covered so it truly does not matter as far as the color of the chipboard goes. And then you're going to get some of your wrinkle ribbon and that's uh, two yards of wrinkle ribbon. So you get all of that, the written tutorial and um, access to the videos. And the access is going to come in the next 24 hours. You'll be receiving an email for those of you that have bought the pattern or the kit pattern, you'll get an email with the video links in it. Okay. Any questions on the actual kit itself before we get started? <clears throat> I do want to note that this is one of my very first patterns. I did do kind of another pattern. It was more of a blog post set up in a pattern type style so I was really kind of nervous about this one. Um, <clears throat> in this pattern I went over and over and over and I emailed it and then I went over it another five times and I found an error in this pattern and that error is going to happen on page nine. The first eight people this morning that got the email don't actually know about this error. The additional others that I have emailed this afternoon know about the error. I emailed it to them. So, Sandy, this is for you and anybody that received it quite early this morning, Pacific Standard Time. Um, it's going to be on page 9, and we need to correct this error. Um, in the first paragraph, it's going to talk about black... Uh, um, a black cardstock piece measuring two and a quarter wide by five tall that should say four and a quarter wide by five tall okay and it should also say that that is the inside spine cover black cardstock piece so my notes are really scribbly because I have horrible writing but it should say four and a quarter wide by five tall so in your guys's um, patterns I have included on the back page so you can correct it right there on page 9 or there's project notes on the back page it is page 20 you can adjust it there just to kind of remember that there was that error and you know the videos will correct that error but I just don't want you guys to be cutting but with the, the black cardstock there are some extra sheets so if there is a cut error you guys will have more than enough cardstock to fix it okay so I think that that is it and we can get going I do want to go over the dies really quick these dies are not included in 
the cost of the kit. We wanted to keep the cost of the kit really low. I wanted a fast project that was cost effective. It, I mean, it's the holidays. We need to be able to, you know, make really cute albums with, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say limited funds because that's not the case, but you, you know, you understand what I'm saying. So this kit is not, it's very cost effective, but there are four dies that I use in this kit. One of them is the Tim Holtz brackets. And I use this one right here. Okay. The Tim Holtz um, stacked words Christmas. I end up using the Merry Christmas and the 25. I use the Tattered Poinsettia Tim Holtz. Oh, that's not going to focus. Okay, well, you'll just have to take my word on it. And then I use this bag die. This is on the front inside cover. Um, Carol will have to tell you who this is by. But all of these dies are in store right now. And I do really have to give a shout out to Carol and Barry. They, some of these dies are extremely hard to find. These are older dies. And I'm talking like I got these a year and a half ago. Some of these, my bracket ones, that was when I first started. So that's almost two years. Um, the points that I've had since at least last Christmas, as well as this one. And um, so they are older. They're very hard to find. Um, they used to be in big box stores and they're not. And so that's kind of a sign. You know, big box stores are typically the last people to get these kinds of things and when they're not even carrying them. So if you don't have these dice, these are good standard holiday dies to have in your stock. So they have these in for you guys. They worked really hard getting them in. So that being said, I'm going to move all of that aside. And we're going to go ahead and start on our kit. And I have got all of my stuff pre-cut. Um, there will not be any measurements given out in class because this is a patterned or a tutorial class. So I've got everything cut. And what we're going to go ahead and start with is, let me find where we're going to. So in your pattern, you're going to have your project supply list. Those are the things that come in the kit. You're going to have your project cut guide. You can go ahead and cut all of these measurements. Um, I did check that one cardstock error on page 9. It's actually correct in the cut guide. I just got it wrong on page 9. Um, so I did double check that. So you'll be able to cut exactly, I, you'll know exactly what I call it and be able to cut those exact measurements. And then for our pages, that's another section page cuts and score measurement guide. It tells you page one, the width, the height, and where to score it at. Okay. Uh, for those that have the pattern where it says on, this is on page three, front, front and back, outside and inside covers. It says in highlighted, do this section last. This section is talking about the pattern paper you put on the front and back covers, not on the actual construction of your album. So we're going to go ahead and start off with page four, part one. Are there any questions before? Oh yes, in the tattered point setters, um, they do have them. They're going to be in tomorrow. Um, I don't know how they found them, but they did just for you guys. They will be in back in tomorrow. Any questions before we get started? I'm going to take a drink. Whew. My hands will not warm up. Sorry about my squeaky chair. I'm going to get a new office chair here, uh, like a drafting table chair that's like way more comfy here shortly because I work on my dad's drafting table that he worked on for like 40 years. So. Okay, part one, what we're going to do is we're going to start with our front and back covers. So here are our front and back covers. Here is our spine. I know it's little. <laughs> okay. So those are the pieces that you're going to need to cut, and you guys have got the measurements for those. So let's go ahead and let's start with the cardstock to cover the front and back cover. 
what we're going to do is I'm going to lay it out just like so. <clears throat> I'm going to grab my half inch score tape. And we are going to put score tape all the way around. And I'm using half inch on purpose because it it squares up my chipboard page for me or my chipboard piece. You'll be able to see that it's going to now fit right in there just like so. Okay. And it will see you butt it up right up against the right hand side. So this is the front and this one's the back. So let me finish putting some tape on this. I get way ahead of myself. I haven't been on the Scrap It Have a Do channel in quite some time. I want to say maybe since we did the Prima time travel thing, maybe. I don't even know. <laughs> I can't remember what I had for breakfast at this point. And we're going to do the same to the back. And this goes really fast. Once you knock out the first one, you're going to be like, whoa. It really does go super fast. It's going to seem slow, but that's because I'm explaining everything. But once you make the first one, it'll click really easy. And don't be intimidated by the flip. You guys are going to freak out because it's the easiest thing on the earth to do. It really is. It's hard to explain in writing, but it's really easy to actually do. Now for this inner section, you could use your wet glue, but for this outer section, I suggest using score tape. Okay. Search. Spine. Okay. So what we're going to do is remove the side piece closest to the spine and then all of the middle score tapes. And this album is not a heavy album. It doesn't put a lot of strain on the front and back covers. So we're just going to line up our chipboard within the score tape up against the edge. Just like so. Perfect. Okay, so this is what you are left with. And then I'm going to burnish that tape on there. Okay, put a front cover. Let's do our back. So we're going to remove the spine side tape over here. And the same same concept. Everything's sticking to me. There we go. Okay. All right. So that's where we're at. So that was uh, page four and five, and now we're on page six of the tutorial, and we're going to go ahead and miter our corners. So our outside 
corners. So for the front cover, it'll be on your left, top and bottom. Um, for the back cover, on your right, top and bottom. Okay. I'll go ahead and use our perfect trim ruler to do that because this is the most awesome thing ever. <laughs> I absolutely love this tool. Okay, and on our back cover, sorry my shadow, I don't, I need to get my studio lights back from Raquel, my stepdaughter. She was taking pictures of the newborn baby in like July, <laughs> I haven't gotten it back yet. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to go ahead and remove score tape and wrap our edges. So I'm going to start with the, let's go ahead and start with the side. Start with this side. Just fold it over. This is just, we, we have built a mini albums exactly like this. So we've had practice, at least on my channel. Okay. So if you by chance start with the bottom, your next one that you're going to want to fold is the top. Always do the opposite. So we did this one, but there is no opposite fold. So if you do start with one of the top or bottoms, do the opposite before you do the side. Move that tape. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and take our tool and push in our corners right here so we get nice, nice looking corners. So let me do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Gonna focus. And then we're gonna fold it up. Okay, and same at the bottom. got nice even corners and this is nice and even okay so let's do the back one same concept same steps just doing it to the back Part two of this class is going to happen next Tuesday. Um, this is actually a quite fast album, especially when you have everything pre-cut, but I didn't want to rush it and I knew that we would have a lot to talk about at the beginning. So we're going to do all of the embellishing um, next Tuesday for this album. I was going to try, I, I could get it done in one night. I mean, maybe if we're really close, we could do it. But things are going to need time to dry, like glossy accents and such, so I just don't want to push it.
Hello, Miss Heather. Let's see you come in. Welcome to all of those who have joined us. So now we've got our front and back outsides covered. And we are now on page seven. You're going to take your cardstock spine cover, which is outside spine cover. There we go. We're going to go ahead and put some tape around it. My little sticky notes. Love those things. Again, I'm using half inch score tape and I do the bottom first and then the top and then I'll do the sides. And there is a reason. I promise. It just makes things a lot easier when you're pulling tape. So your second page in your tutorial where is where your project cut guides are and in the actual album I tried to use um, the same kind of wording. So um, on here it says outside spine cover and it says the same thing in the cardstock spine cover. It doesn't say outside but pretty obvious. Okay, so now that we have got our half inch tape all the way around the edge, we are going to peel off the left side and we're going to place our, our page down right up to the edge of the tape. So I'm going to go over right to the edge so you can no longer see the tape. It, it's nice and straight. It's all lined up. If you have a grid mat, you can use your grid mat just to make sure. Where's my ruler? something sticky. There we go. Okay. Oops. And you're going to do the same to the back. Sorry, you guys, I'm lining things up. I get all kinds of quiet when I do that. <laughs> Don't want stuff to be wonky. Okay. Okay. We did leave out one little step, and that's putting in our little piece here, but that's okay. We can do it right now. There's nothing wrong with that. So let's go ahead, and we're going to put tape on the back of it. I left out one step, putting our spine. But if you want to do it how I just did it, the instructions show you a little bit differently. We put the spine on the paper first and then put the pages on. 
but it gives you the correct gap anyhow. It's about a quarter inch gap in between there, so. I have to tell you, it's hard to follow instructions when you already know how to do it. That makes it just even more difficult. <laughs> Okay, so your little spine piece, just cover one side with score tape, or you can use a wet glue, whatever you want to use for this part. We're going to peel off our score tape. Okay, and you're going to that's why we use this tape down here and this is why I use that half inch it allows me to know exactly where I'm going to put it and then you can eyeball this there's just about probably a little bit less than a quarter inch on both sides just as long as it's straight Okay, pretty nice gaps we're shoving paper into those gaps so it all works out I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and burnish. And you'll be able to see your gaps on your tutorial as well. Okay. Now we're going to flip to page 8 of your tutorial. And we're going to remove the top and bottom tape and fold those over. When you burnish this, be careful because you do have that gap. You don't want it to bust. And then we'll do this one. Let's get all this score tape out of the way. <clears throat> Is everybody watching contently? Nobody's chatting. Or maybe my chat's not moving. That could very well be. Okay. So now it looks just like that. Okay, so now in your... You're going to work your seams on your spine. And when I say work your seams, we're just going to lightly, and you can use any of the bone folders, just give it a little pressure as you bend it up so you get a nice clean seam right there. Okay, you're going to do that on top and bottom. You need to just kind of instruct it where to go for folding open and close. Okay, watching intently. Okay. And then you're going to do the same for the back. And we're going to be putting more paper over this, so we're going to be doing this step again. But for right now, we're just working this first layer of paper. Okay. So now we've got our mini album. Super cute. And I just kind of, I always bend it against itself. You've got enough room. Give it a nice good bend. Do it gently. You don't want to tear your spine. That would be horrible. But this album is so light. and I mean, look. It stays closed and everything. So, any questions about that portion? Oh, let's put the paper on it real quick. Okay, so we're on page 9. And we're talking about inside spine cover. Now, in the actual video tutorial that you're going to see, I initially had it at two and a quarter. So you could line it up with the edges of this two and a quarter front and it just kind of wraps all the way down. But we do need to cover this portion over here because the rest of this right here doesn't get covered with anything. There's no reason for it to be covered. You can't see it. 
So what we're going to do is line up this piece right here with about an eighth of an inch on top and bottom. We're going to line it up with our the wrap around top and bottom piece from the front spine. So you know that you're even and it's going to get adhered down just like so. Okay, and then we're going to work it into the seams. Okay. Now, if for some reason you have cut the two and a quarter width, all you need to do is cut another one that's two inches by the same height and put it right next to it. It's nothing major. I mean, it solves all the problems. So you, basically this is where our the original width, and I actually think this is what happened in the video. This was two and a quarter in the video but just to make it easier and so there wasn't another cut and there was a smooth transition as you flip I made it all one piece in the tutorial so again this is page nine this is where the error comes so you would have your initial spine cover here if you've already done this part at the initial measurements you would just add another piece that has a two inch width with the same height and that solves all the problems no worries. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead and do it this way. It's just way easier. So we're going to cover this in tape. And I'm going to put some tape on my chipboard pieces. I really want to hold this portion down. Does everybody get that? It's kind of hard to explain. Crazy me. Got all excited making the tutorial. I've only had weeks to do it and I waited to last minute. But hey, it's done. So, you know, they say that, you know, with age comes beauty. Well, <laughs> with more patterns comes perfection. <laughs> so, we'll get there, guys. I really tried to not have any mistakes, but it is what it is. Okay, so I put score tape on the middle chipboard piece here and right against the edge of the back and, and of the front. And then I'm going to also put score tape around this paper and then right in here, right in this section. Okay. Uh oh, computer keeps stalling. That's no good. <clears throat> if you have wet glue, you can use wet glue for this. It's completely up to you, your adhesive. I like to use the score tape because it's quite strong. I know, try to get it back up. That never works. Okay. Also, next Tuesday for the finish of this class, we will actually be giving away to one of you guys this album as well. So we'll have the Times Nouveau version by Graphic 45 for those that have purchased a kit or pattern or kit patterns. Um, and then this one will go to someone in class. So yay, exciting. <laughs> Just wanna make sure that I'm gonna have, I need one more strip. Oh geez, hopefully we won't have any chat problems. That's gonna stink. Okay. 
and everybody's allowed to participate, even those that are not in the U.S. So, Miss Heather, of course. So is Sophie here? Is Sophie in the U.S.? I don't think she's in the U.S. I'm horrible. I'm horrible with people's names. I don't even know where I live half the time. Psh, let's just be honest. <laughs> I'm going to pretend. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and peel all this off and hope I get it on the first stick. Like I said, you can use your liquid if you don't want to use the score tape. Just give it a hot second to dry before you start folding because then you will get bulges. And I've had to use my half inch because I'm completely out of my one inch. I know. It's a tragic day. Okay. So we've got our tape here and our tape here. So we're going to line this edge up with the fold over. You see? We're going to line that edge up with that edge with, a, ooh, with an eighth of an inch at the top and an eighth of an inch at the bottom. So let me get my top and bottom really quick. Ta-da! I'm gonna burnish it down. This baby's not going anywhere. So now it looks like that. Okay, and now we're going to again work our seams, crease our seams. Work your seams gently. Okay. We have more than enough room between our chipboard pieces to accommodate this paper. And then we're going to do the back one. If I can find my seam. Oops. There we go. Brilliant. Alright. This is one strong little guy now. Okay. So now our actual building of the mini album is done. We're going to work on our pages next. Um, put our pattern paper on the front and back and inside cover. Any questions on this particular piece here? So that takes you through uh, the top part of page 10 in your tutorial. So for part two, it says in this section we're going to be working on our black cardstock pages. Um, if you follow the page cuts and score measurement guide at the beginning of this tutorial, then your pages are already going to be cut and scored. Um, I do have mine cut. I don't have them scored. Saved it just for you guys. Okay. So... On page three is where you're going to find the section titled Page Cut and Score Measurement Guide. Okay, it's going to give you page one, page two, page three, and then the cut and the score. So I have got mine all labeled and ready to go. We're going to set this aside. <laughs> My sticky notes with labels. That and that. Okay. Page one. Page two. Page. 
three, four, and five. Okay. So you're gonna need your scoreboard and you're gonna follow the instructions on your cut and score guide for your pages. Which I need to pull that up real quick. So page three. Page three, page, where's my sticky? There it is. Page four. Oh, I should stick these back on them, actually. <laughs> so I know which one's which when I go to assemble. Genius. <laughs> That's what I should be doing. I know that one's page one, it's the biggest one. Oops. I have to cut another page for page five. Okay. Okay. So, and just a little side note for those, it is in the tutorial on page three, right below the page cuts and score measurements. When I mat these pages, once this is put together, I mat one eighth of an inch less in width and in height. That gives you your mat. Okay. Um, there was no reason to go through and give you every, that would have added more and more pages to the tutorial when I could simply say, an eighth less in width and an eighth less in height. Okay, so now we're going to burnish all of our score lines and make sure everything lines up properly. Okay. Page two. So we are on page 10 of this. So as you have all the pages cut and scored, here's our little score line that we gave. It gives a little bit of a flap right here. You're going to be putting tape right here up against this side of the flap. You can see here. Here's score. Here's our flap. So essentially, if you were setting it on your desk, your flap is always right here on your right, and the side that gets tape is the side that would touch your desk, just so you know, okay? You need to really burnish these score lines really, really, really well, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on these. Sorry, I have to pull it into myself to see it because it's black paper and it just it kind of stinks working on black paper. Okay. So here's our long piece that we have. Here's our fold. We fold it over. So essentially this is our first page, okay? So let's go ahead and open it and we've got our score line here. What you're going to do is take this with your flap right here and butt it up against the score line. Don't go over it, but butt it 
up against it. Okay, and you're going to make sure that your pages over here on this side are all the same length. You do not want any of the pages hanging over the initial top big page. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? So here's our score line. Here's our flap with tape on it, and it's going to go right up against the left side, so this side of the score line. Okay. And if for some reason one of these pages ends up being like a sixteenth of an inch longer than your front cover, just trim it down. Okay? Nobody cuts perfect, including myself, honestly. But you want to make sure you do not go over that score line. Okay? And then just to make sure that you don't, I'm going to bring it over and do a nice burnish on it. Okay. Now these are all lined up. Nothing's wonky. Okay. Our side pages are lined up. Okay. So I'll just push that forward. Grab page three. And again, you've got your score line here. You're going to do the same exact thing that you just did to page two to page one except for now you're lining up with page two's score line. Okay, so here's page one's score line. Here's page two's score line. So you're gonna line page three up to page two's score line. Does that make sense? <laughs> And again, here's our little flap. We're going to put tape or ad um, adhesive on the side that would touch the desk if I were to lay it flat. Okay. It's the best way I can explain it. So again, page three lines up to page two's score line and make sure your pages reach the end and don't go over. Okay. And adhere it down. It is like a waterfall. Mm -hmm. moved it. Sorry if my head gets in the way or you get shadow. I gotta get this right. Okay, and then burnish it. Go ahead and fold it back, burnish, fold the next page back, and burnish. Okay, okay. page four, same thing. And this is the previous.
got a little tape overhang here. There we go. Again, lining it up to page three's score line. And to the end. Fold it back on itself. Crease that fold. This is very important to make sure you fold it back on themselves to crease those folds. And then our final page, page five. Tape on that. Now, Again, repeating those steps. Let's go ahead and fold it back on itself. Increase it. I'm going to fold all of them back. Increase them. So we are adding bolt to them. So now once all folded up, you're left with this. Ta-da! No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, this is what you're really left with though. All of that looks like this. Look how thin it is. Love it. Okay. Hence the really small spine. Oh, I've got to stand up. I have been, I guess if you want to say at play or work since seven o'clock this morning because I procrastinate. It's myself, that's my problem. I think there's a thrill of like waiting to the very last second and I'm like, am I gonna get it done? Am I gonna get it done? And there's like that push and then when it's done, I'm like, yes. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So we're going to move on to page 12. Next we're going to be working with our black and white mats to slide for the slide. Oh wait, no, page 12, yes. We're going to set our pages aside and we're going to assemble the, the back pocket slide cover and that's what it actually says in your cut guide. So you'll know exactly which one that is. It says back pocket slide cover and it gives you the cardstock piece and the measurements. So you're going to cut that and you're going to pull that out. And you're also going to pull out your hinge strips. Back pocket slide cover and hinge strips. Okay. So I've got my piece there, it's already cut, so I don't need to do anything with that right this second. But we're going to take our hinge strips and go ahead and set them in there with the longest piece on the vertical and score it right down the middle. I'm 
I'm going to do that to both of them. Oh, pressed a little hard on that one. We'll have to see if it's okay. I might have to cut another one. Yep, I'm going to have to cut another one. Jeez. I mean my strength. No fret, though. I've got plenty of little scraps over here that I can use up. strength. Okay, let's try this again. All right, you're going to go ahead and fold those in half and burnish them. Sorry, Auntie Maggie, that you're having issues. Stinking you stream. Hey, be nice to my friends. Okay, so this is what we have. So now that it's folded, you can see that there. We're going to put tape here and here, so on the outsides, if you're looking at it. Six, that's not bad. We're gonna be papering soon. Okay, and you're gonna cut the ends of these at an angle. There's my scissors. There we go. What you're going to go ahead and, and do is adhere them to, so this is how it would sit in the book. So this is your top and this is your bottom. So you're going to be putting hinges on the top and the bottom back side. <clears throat> wow, throat got all kinds of scratchy. Let me go ahead and do that. My internet, well, it's, it might be the internet. Since my laptop crashed and I'm using my husband's, <clears throat> I'm using, oh, geez. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, oh that's a Band-Aid. Just rip it off. There we go. I am using an internet, or I mean, I am using a computer with a slower processor, one, and um, I am no longer... Uh, directly hooked up to the modem like I was on the last one so it very well could be my computer because it seems like we've had more issues since I have this but hopefully in the next couple of weeks I will be getting a replacement computer for mine well it could very well be mine
there's, you know, I have to be able to give you guys the show at a certain speed for it to be of any kind of quality. And I don't know why I pulled the tape off of that yet. Don't pull the tape off. Just pull the tape off of one side of the hinge, okay? Leave the other one with tape on it. There we go. Just <laughs> So it looks like this, okay? Got your hinges top and bottom. Right? So now go ahead and grab your book or your pages. And we're going to open it up. Okay. So here's our first score line. Here's the smaller part. So the bigger parts over here on our left. So this is actually the back. This smaller one is actually your back page. Okay. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is grab our, in your pattern, it's going to tell you on your cut guide, it's going to be called the white mat for the slide and the black mat for the slide. Go ahead and cut those and then you're going to adhere them down. There's a particular way to do this. So you're going to line it up and you're going to have about I said about a quarter of an inch in the pattern, but it ends up being more like an eighth and that's okay. So you just have your, you guys can barely see that. That's like a sixteenth of an inch right there at the edge, maybe even less. And then you have your eighth over here. It doesn't truly matter. Honestly, it doesn't. So go ahead and adhere it down and you may want to use score tape for this. I'm just going to use score tape. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll put it on the white one because this is the part of the album where you're pulling like the hardest. And so you really need to make sure that you use something strong to adhere it down with. This is the part that gets all of the, the pushing and the pulling. So I would focus a lot of your good tape here on this piece. Oh, what is Carol doing now? She's caffeine wired to everything. That I do not doubt. I've actually seen, well, I haven't seen Carol's new coffee maker. Saw the old one. Her husband Dan made me a latte. It was yummy. I think I had two while I was there. <sighs> okay. So let me line this up and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. <clears throat> you just have a wider chunk over here and a less black showing. It doesn't, it, it really, there's no effect on it whatsoever. Okay. So with this, okay, so this, so this is the, the first piece that we, we did and there's our score line. So this piece, I, I was incorrect. This is not your back page. This is your back page. This is your slide pull. So we've got our slide pull and then you see all of the pages adhered down with their little score lines and then it gets to the last page. So it actually looks like this. Here's the front, page two, page three, page four, page five, and then here's our slide piece, okay? So what we're gonna do is take a ruler and a pencil. Okay. 
and three quarters of an inch from, this is the slide piece right here, from the right side. Go ahead and draw a line. Let me try and get it straight. Okay, on this side, the left side of the card that we just built, and it's double layered for a reason, because we're pushing in and out, and we need some really heavy, heavy duty piece here. Okay, so I'm going to apply some score tape, and I'm going to use wet glue. So, where's my quarter inch? Oh, here it is. Okay, so on this. If I'm looking at the card on my left hand side, I'm going to right up against the edge, I'm going to put some score tape on the back where the black is. So I'm going to just use a combo. You can use all score tape or all wet glue, whatever you like. I'm going to use a combo. Alright, we have a major storm going on here right now too. It's extremely windy outside. And then I'm going to take and put some wet glue down. Ooh. Okay, it'll spread as I put the paper down. So okay, you can see the line I drew. Okay, I left about a quarter of an inch where my tape's gonna go because I'm gonna butt this tape right here, right up to that line, and then the rest of it will be wet glue. Okay. Just like so. So this is now what you see when it's all folded up. Page one, page two, page three, four, five, and here's our slide pull. Okay? So now what we're going to do is take page five. We're going to be working with this page five. So if, if our book was open, this is how we would see it, just like this. Okay? We're going to adhere page five down to our What's it technically called? I want to give you technical. Um, back pocket slide cover that we just built with the hinges. So here's our slide cover. Okay, so this is the top of it. And we're going to line page five up with the outside corners of our slide cover. Now our slide cover is approximately a sixteenth of an inch bigger on the top and the bottom, and you need to accommodate for that. See if I can show you without going all wonky. You can see that right there. That's okay. So we need to adhere that down as well. Okay. I'm gonna use my score tape on this one. I'll put some other adhesive down as well, but. I want to get it started with this ATG tape because if you get it wrong, it's going to be hard to get back up. So I put down some ATG and I'm just going to put some score tape in between. There's not a ton of pressure on this part. It just stops it from pulling all the way out, as you'll see here in just a second. big old chicken about it. Okay, so here is our um, back pocket slide cover. Here's our hinges. Those are going to face down. We're going to take page five and line it up. So it would be like this. We're going to line it up with the edges of our slide cover. Oh, 
pull off the tape. That would be efficient and helpful. Sorry if I miss any questions, you guys. I'm just kind of not looking at chat. I, once we're done with this part, I'll stop, and if you guys have questions, you guys can have them answered. So get this lined up first, and then press the rest down. There we go. Okay, you can see here my page, this is the edge of page five right here, is lined up exactly with my slide cover right here at this edge. And then you can see my about sixteenth of an inch right there and right here as well. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now what you're going to do is wrap your hinges around the back side of the entire thing. Okay? Just like so. Okay, so now our hinges are around the entire piece. So here was our white piece. This is our slide piece. Lay it flat and hinges around the back. Ooh, that got blurry. Okay. Any questions about any of those things that we just did that I can answer? Donna, I saw the cutest video on your page the other day of, um, I believe, your husband waking up your grandson. Oh, he's adorable. Stick it adorable. Love him. So cute. Okay. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and take your album. So this is the back inside. And we are going to end up removing our adhesive from these strips. And lining them up. It gets pretty close to the spine up here at the front. But this is why in your tutorial in your tutorial just one second It's uh, starting on page 14, it's part three. And um, at the very beginning, I, I say that we're putting it all together in the section, we're going to make our mini album flip. And then the next thing you see is a section, it, in caps, it says, do not actually do this step yet. Um, I'm gonna go on and explain how to adhere your piece down to uh, it talks about this um, backslide cover and adhering it down to the chipboard before actually adhering it to your pages. Um, I did it that way so you could see what it looks like and where it's supposed to go adhered down because once you get your pages in there you can no longer see this edge okay so I show you what it's supposed to look like without the pages so I show you how to lay your backslide cover down and that's on the top of page 15 and my pictures are really dark, but that's because my ink is just not working. Um, I explain how to lay it down an, an eighth of an inch from the top and the bottom and the side of your back chipboard, okay? And see, if you were to go line this up, you can't tell where an eighth of an inch is 
over here because this white piece is covering all of this. So I kind of show you what it's supposed to look like without the pages and I, and I lay down just the back slide on here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere it down. Let's fold it over all of our stuff. I know where it needs to go, so. Let me remove my tape. Quarter or an eighth of an inch from the top, from the bottom, and from the side. And I'm just setting it on here to see if I'm straight and then I'll press it down and show you guys. So I've got our page just now we're going to flip. This one's a little bit on the high side compared to the bottom, but that's okay. As you can see there, it's a little bit on the high side. So, I say it makes it very hard to line it up, but it's really hard to get that page on there without it doing it this way, okay? And there's that portion of your flip, okay? So you open up the book, and this is where creasing your, once we put weight on the pages, they really stay down, but creasing those folds helps to separate the pages, like this one. And this one. And this one. Okay, any questions on this part? We're going to do the bracket slide, which is the last thing in the actual tutorial. We're going to do that last. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some paper on this. Um, in the bracket slide instructions, or the black bleh, bracket pull, um, are under additional steps on page 15. It's the only additional step that's on there. Actually, let's do the brackets. I've got, I know what paper we're using, so. Normally I would wait to find out what paper we're going to use, but. Okay, let me get this paper. and pop some of the sleigh bells and I use the wood grain paper in this collection um, I used my spare pieces Ooh, tape is on there hold on you guys oh my goodness that is taped Holy Krishnoli. Okay. So, you're going to be able to get the cover for the front and back cover out of one sheet of 12 by 12. And for, so here's our wood grain. And it's on the same one as the deer and then for our front and back cover I use this one and on the back side it's got the red chevron and on the inside front cover I use it's red with trees here we go okay so we'll work with those three papers for right now
And what I'm going to do is take my trimmer. And I I cut these die cut brackets out of the cardstock, but you actually do them out of your pattern paper. And you're going to create a mirror image when you stack them on your die. So that's why I'm going to show you guys this real quick. Okay, and so you have the me measurements for this in your kit or in your pattern. Let me get my trimmer. I'm just going to cut myself a couple pieces of paper real quick. It's one of my favorites as well. I'm cutting the paper to do our brackets. Okay. So to do your brackets, you're going to need your die cut machine. And if you if you don't have this die and you just you know can't get it, um, they do have it in shop for you. But if for some reason, I got an email on this earlier. Um, you just don't have access to obtaining this die. Um, your border punches are going to work great for this. Um, let me see. Here's one. You could use the scallop scallop. And you don't want to use a border punch that's extremely detailed because, again, they're going to be pulling on it. So you're going to need to find a border punch that's not um, really delicate and dainty. Um, the scallop scallops, one of them that I have, and the... No name one that I didn't write the name down for. That one is one I have. I mean, you can look in your stash and see what you have. Um, you can just keep it, just keep the white if you want. And that's completely up to you. Look in the dies that you have. See if you've got a straight line or kind of a curved line of a die will work. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull out our bracket die and our cutting plates. Okay, so what you're going to do is stack this piece with the deers facing each other. So it's a wood grain on the outside of both sides. We need to create a mirrored image. And what I'm going to do is here's my bracket, the one I'm using. You guys can see it right here. I'm going to kind of center it in this bracket. Kind of just eyeball center it. And then I line this edge right here, you can see right here, up with the edge of the foam. And you can use some washi to hold it down, whatever you want to use. Or you can just line it up and set it on your cutting plate very gently. Put your pad on top of it, hold it down tight, and run it through. And voila, we have got our mirrored image brackets that are going to go on our album. So um, the thing about the um, Graphic 45 uh, Times New View 
in in that album you're gonna see so we just cut that bracket out and so we're going to use that that's the one we want to use but in this one you see this and this is this piece right here okay so when i cut this piece it was the height that i needed but it was two inches wide okay and that piece get this this is your scraps you would typically throw these away but keep them you can use them as they're kind of like reverse brackets and put them on here on your pages or whatever and you can use it as a pocket and it'll hold your tags I mean might as well right it makes it look really kinda cool so just a little tip you can use your like right here so this one is holding as a pocket okay and it slides right in there it's got a nice grip nice hold so don't throw those away so technically you have two, there's three dies on here, but you have two, or I'm, I'm sorry, there's two dies on here, but you can get three out of it. Okay. I'm going to set those aside because I'm keeping those. <laughs> tell you what. Okay. So let me move my machine now that we're done with that portion. And we're going to go ahead and adhere it down. So our slide is in a closed position. Yes, you can see it, but this is the closed position. Um, what we're going to do is put our brackets on there, front and back. Okay? Just like so. And it leaves a little bit of white out here on the side, but that's completely okay. Okay. And again, so you can use your liquid glue for this, your score tape, whatever you want to use. Just make sure you put your glue on your, your head side. Hey, Robs. Welcome, welcome. Hello to anyone that's come in that I missed at the very beginning. I didn't do roll call, did I? Maybe I did. I think I did. See, I don't even remember the beginning of the show. That's how bad it's gotten. <laughs> so any of you guys that have purchased the tutorial as of, I don't know, what, 3 o'clock my time this afternoon, maybe 4, have it emailed to you. Okay, so it's in the closed position. We're going to remove the tape and you're going to line these edges up with your white. It's the same height as your white card stock that went on this back pull page. Okay. I'm going to add some glue. I put tape down for the initial hold and glue for a little extra something something. Gotta have that little extra. Okay. So don't press just yet, and you're going to have to flip it over, because you've got wet glue there. And we're going to put this one on the back side of this hinge. Oh. 
And if you don't like that little piece of white showing, when you line your bracket up with your um, a foam, if you don't if you don't like that little piece of white, which is about a quarter of an inch, showing, by lining it up with the foam, you can line it up with the edge of the actual die itself. It'll give you a little bit more room there on the end. Oops. I forgot that I had wet glue going here. Now you're just going to match it up with the die on the other side. and press. Okay. Got a little bit of overhang there, but that's okay. Kind of cool. Oh, okay, light. There we go. Sorry about the light, you guys. And once we get weight on these, these will lay just nice and flat when you flip them. So you can put your little sentiment there that they won't see until they pull it out, however you want to do it. There we go. Any questions on that portion? Okay, so we're going to do the front and back cover and then the inside cover and we'll work on the pages, putting paper on them. So front and back cover, we're using this paper right here. And what you're going to be measuring is an eighth of an inch from the top, bottom, and this side because you're going to butt this paper up to this side. Here's the, this is from the spine, so you're going to butt it right up against that. And then you need an eighth of an inch, the top, bottom, and side. These measurements are not in the pattern because it is completely up to you how you want to put your paper on because this paper doesn't affect this album. So you can decorate your album exactly how you want to do it. If you want to go all the way to the edges, if you want a thicker black edge or a thinner, it's completely up to you at this point. Okay. So I'm going to cut my width at six and one eighth for the front and five for my height. And so it's, oh, that's not going to cut it. It'll be the same for the back, same width and height. portion off. I'm going to do five and one sixteenth just because. Okay, so you're going to put that on there, adhere it down, and look, you will have a nice black around the edge. Okay. And so for the inking of these papers, I did use um, the black soot um, very lightly. It's not, I mean, you can't even tell. It's, it just covers up the white because we all know how I hate the white. And I used it on the brackets as well. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and grab our black soot. Our next one for the back real quick and then we can set these papers aside so you have all of this left over these are our front and backs we're going to ink them just 
really fast away. back in our front. Let's go ahead and cut our inside cover. Now our inside cover, we're going to just measure, and again I like to leave an eighth of an inch all the way around. So, looks like we're sitting at about six and five eighths wide by about five tall. Just a little over five tall. And we are going to use this lovely paper right here. I'm going to make sure that that's right. I'm just going to double check that. Nope. So the six and five eighths. tree branches. Those are going to go inside cover after I ink them just like so. Okay. And then of course we don't put anything on the back inside cover because it's already covered. to do that too close to the and these pages really don't hold a lot of weight so you could probably use your ATG gun for these inside pages you're really just putting a mat down and some pictures um, the insides of these pages you cannot get bulky with this has to be able to flip and lay flat and especially the front cover which I've learned that lesson if you've watched any of the videos because this front cover especially it slides underneath so when it comes back out anything over here it's going to catch on if you're not careful so we're still going to be putting the Merry Christmas we're just sliding it over to this side of the page instead of starting it here Okay. Do not put your branches upside down. I tried to glue it on like this last time. I mean, I guess it doesn't look that wonk wonky, but you know, be aware. This is directional. Okay. I'm going to burnish that down. So we have our front inside cover. Right. Let's go ahead and put these on. And even with your front and backs covers, backs covers, even with your front and back covers, you can use your ATG. Just make sure that you're going the correct direction. Again, if you've got directional paper, because there's not much going on the front either. Not a lot of this stuff. This is, I swear to goodness, you're going to pick up this mini album and think it's empty. There's not a lot of weight to it. Okay. So butt it up against that seam. Give yourself your top one eighth and your bottom one eighth. 
And then your side will come. There you go, just like so. Let's do our back and we'll get some of these papers on. So we'll get our pattern paper on our pages and next Tuesday we're going to do the embellishing portion, putting on the mats, creating the tags, using our seam binding and doing the poinsettia flowers and we'll be done. So it's a super quick and easy project. It really is that easy. Once you get going, you do your first one, you're going to be like, holy moly. I did, I had the album built already which only took me a half hour. It was the one I did for the video tutorial with no editing, by the way. Um, so I didn't cut any of it out. It only took me a half hour to build it. And uh, um, about an hour to paper everything on the inside. It's different when you're working with brand new paper. So again, this is the back. We're going to butt it up to the spine paper there. And press it down. Okay. Let's tie your adorably, adorably, adorable, cute front and back cover. We're going to ink this bracket over here on the side. And you could, you should probably ink it before you put it on, but. Them. And again, this will flip a lot easier with the pages with some weight on them. Nice and slow. Uh, this does get harder to pull the more weight you put on your pages, so that's why we're using our pattern. We'll have our mat and our photo. This one is fully photoed. So it does get stuck because again, this is where I misplaced. I didn't think of the slide when I did this. It's where I misplaced the Christmas, the Merry Christmas. So this is actually going to move over here, which will give it a good clearance of about that much on this side. Plus I've got the enamel stars sitting right there and this 25, which is going to go over here. And <laughs> I didn't think of that when I did, this is the template. So that's how you learn. Okay, see they flip very nicely with the weight. See, I have to help it because it gets caught. Okay, so next week we'll do these matted. We'll put the mats down. Um, we'll make the tags out of our scraps. There's the seam binding, of course, that you could tie into the tags if you want. I did not do all of the tags. I didn't find a need, just that front one. But there is tags in, in all of these and different sizes and such. And you can turn it without actually pulling, just as you saw, and it just pulls it right back in. Okay. See? So you don't actually have to use the pull. It works, um, you know, if we tried to do it on this one, it might do it. It's harder without the weight. It is doing it, but I got to push at the seams to make it go. Okay. Oops. Okay. Let me set this one aside. So let's go ahead and put some paper right here. And I didn't put any paper down the middle of the spine. I like the black. Um, but for this inside cover, we use the antler paper. Well, I use the antler paper. You can use whatever paper you like to use. But all of the height for the pages are going to be cut at 4 and 7 eighths for the height. Now, the widths are going to vary. You're going to have to pay attention to the widths as you put them down. Let me cut the height and then we'll cut the width. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay. And then you're just going to measure your page. I'm going to do six and three eighths. Here's six and a quarter. Do six and a quarter. Okay. And then I'll ink it and adhere it down. Okay. It gets, when you have the black on black, it gets really hard to see. So here's just a little bit of a tip. As you're putting your paper down on your pages, grab a piece of white paper and put it between the next one. So now your edges stand out. You can see the black edges all the way around, whereas before you couldn't because all of your pages are equal. I mean, they're the same length and same height, so you just you can't see where it all is. So I'm going to ink it and then put it down. I'm so going to run out of ATG, ATG tape. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it. And I don't think I have any refills. I need one inch score tape. ATG tape. There we go. Oh, you're welcome, Auntie Maggie. Okay, so that one's down. Let's go ahead and flip the page. Again, moving our paper. And on page two, the paper that we used is the flannel. Now you can see that I used the flannel on both pages. So I cut one strip at the proper height, and then I work from there because I like it just flows right into the next page. I just love it that way. There's not a lot going on. There's nice paper in the background, but your focus is the pictures. Okay. It says a lot. It makes it a lot more conjumbled when you've got two pieces this close together. It's different from our hinge books. We have that huge gap in the middle, the three eighths of the inch, the even quarter of an inch between your pages. Whereas this, it looks like one continuous page. There's no discernible gap. Okay. So let's grab our flannel, or a hyssop flannel, I guess, flannel paper. Okay, so we're going to cut one strip at our height, which all the height on all of these pages is always going to be four and seven eighths. That's never going to change. You're just going to have to adjust the, for the width because not all the pages are the same width. It gets smaller as the flip goes. Okay. And so I believe the width on this one that we would actually paper at is going to be six and an eighth. But we're going to go ahead and cut it right down the middle at six, as I did this one earlier. Okay. Well, just a little bit of a bigger gap on the ends or in the middle, but it's not by much. And we'll line it up just like so. Whoops. Okay. First, I need to ink my pages. I have a PM. Um, oh How do we get to the PMs? Oh wait. Ah, uh, okay. Found it. Okay, Carol PM. Sorry, you guys. My 
computer. There we go. I want to make sure that these line up together. Okay, and we're going to adhere those down. Start with this one first. Remember your white paper, just so you can see your stuff. Move our paper. And then I keep my pattern lined up so it flows. So this is so that all of my lines match up. Oh, and that would be the end of it. That scared me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Darn it. There we go. So now our... Well, is that lining up? Yeah, that lines up. Okay. I'm going to flip our pages. And I'm just going to have to use my... Other glue runner thingy. I need more tape. I wonder how much I have left on this thing. Not very much. Hopefully this isn't repositionable. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Okay, so for the next page, I use my paper. Use this paper. I use the top portion. I love the paper in this collection. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of my favorites. I would have to say this and so this for like more adultish and then what's that other one that I'm using for the it's the all bundled up. Those were my two favorites. This one and the all bundled up. I'm trying not to stand next to the camera while I ink my edges. For those that don't know, I'm just inking my edges with the black set. 
because it's black paper. I like the transition that gives it gives it. So I'm just gonna look, make sure I've got the correct, and I do. So is sticky. Better not mess this one up. And then it just kind of carries on with the words from page to page. What is everybody laughing at? Yay! I love new stuff that comes in. I get all stocked up on it. Some of those go so fast. It's like, oh my goodness. If I don't stock the store, I'm not going to catch it. Move our white paper to this side. And now I'm lining my height up to make sure that it lines up with the paper on the other side. more sets to do and then this will be done. So for our next page we're using the cream plaid. Such a dork. Dorkus. Duh. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking I might have to bust out the wet glue if I run out of tape. Which I love wet glue. It comes in handy, especially for a lot of little pieces. But I am not like I like putting my pages down with tape. That is me with tape. Down. Oh, look at the little deer head. Oh, how cute. Mm, sad. I don't want to cover that one up. But I'm going to.
I like the black with this. The black, the cream, and the white, I think just does really well for this paper collection. Not cream. What did I say? Black craft and white. Oh, oh yo yo. And our last page. And on this last page, I use the red reindeer. Wait, is this our last page? Yeah. Did I miss a page? I missed a. Nope. In my original album that you guys keep seeing, there is another set, but um, it's really hard for that last page to flip because of it, so we took it down one page. I just think for the safety of the album <laughs> that it's... Um, And it gives you a bigger one on this last page. So in in my album, there's an additional, which you can do an additional. It's not going to mess up any of the measurements. You just need to do it exactly how we added these pages, cut down by. You'll see the pattern in the. You'll see the pattern of measurement sizes in the actual pattern. So if you wanted to put a six page in, you can. I just think that with the weight and everything that the five is good because it gives you ten and ten for a little mini like this is perfect in my humble opinion And by the way, each of these pages, as they flip, these ironically end up being the same size. So, you know, these two, same size. These two, same size. These two, same. That one's on its own. Didn't plan it that way. It just ended up happening that way. So that was not a stroke of genius. <laughs> now I need to bring that here. This will be our last page. Let me ink it and we'll tape it on. So let's go over what we're going to do next week. Um, I am already on the calendar to be on Scraps of the Do's channel because I have a lineup of projects. Um, I'm trying to pull up my calendar, guys. So next Tuesday is the 18th. We'll be back here on the 18th at 5. Same time, same place. Are there any questions about what we've done so far in the building of this album? So for those of you guys that have bought the pattern, 
I will be working hard to get you guys out the video links tomorrow. Oh, I thought I didn't line that up. That was about to be tragic. And so for next week on this album, like I said, we're going to work on the mats with the crafts, the creams, and the blocks, and work on our tags and do the front covers, and then we'll do the little pocket right here on the front inside cover. Line this up. And voila. No, oh, this one's sticking. I was wondering. You see how they lay more flat when you open it. And once you even get the mats and the pictures on there, it's going to lay even flatter. Okay. Super cute. Put your sentiment right there. You know, the Heaven Stalls wish you a Merry Christmas 2014. They won't ever see it until they pull on it. <laughs> okay. Super, look how compact this is. Super, super small and compact. I absolutely love how it turned. I mean, look. This is it laying down. I mean, it's laying down. There's no bulk to this whatsoever. Okay. So, for those of you that have not, that came late or didn't know about this, um, there is a kit with tutorial or just the tutorial itself available with the fine ladies at scrapdavadu.com. And no worries, if they can't figure out that this is a pulley over here, they can just turn the pages. It will still work as a functioning, just turn the page kind of deal. Okay. You don't need to put instructions. I mean, you could put a little sticky that said pull here, <laughs> but my fear is that they're going to like pull. So they can just turn and maybe they'll see it coming out and they'll be like, oh, hey. You know, like, oh, yeah, <laughs> kind of reaction. Okay. So this one is my, I'll show you guys my sixth page. And it is quite small, actually. I cut it down. So this is the sixth page using the green trees for the background, which you really can't see because it's covered pretty much by mats because they are smaller. Um, this part one gets stuck. So there we go. So next Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here, we are going to give this one away for those that are in chat. And then we are going to give away the Times Nouveau because you can use this pattern right here. It doesn't have to be Christmas. Use it for birthdays. Use it, you know, use this as baby announcements or use it as um, wedding announcements to like really cool, like, you know, close family. Um, you know, for the grandma and grandpas, when your baby turns one that live like 12,000 miles away, send them one of these. Say, this was my baby's first year. You know, really, really compact and cool and a great gift to send off to those that are super far away. Gosh, three of these aren't even as thick as one of my albums. <laughs> so... I hope um, I'm going to stop the recording. So for those of you guys that are watching the recording, this is uh, part one. And next Tuesday, November 18th of 2014 at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we will be doing part two. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next Tuesday.